Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, The Real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with Dr. Nancy Bromberg and Eric Darling, who are here talking to us about guide dogs, detection dogs, search and rescue dogs, therapy dogs, dogs assisting people with disabilities, the dogs who selflessly serve the public, and they are helping to honor these animals and their work with the American College of Veterinary Ophthalmologists, the ACVO, ACVO, maybe, I guess we call that, huh? Um, you guys are launching the sixth annual ACVO Marial National Service Dog Eye Exams, the big event, the annual event, where you provide free sight-saving eye exams to service animals during the whole month of May. I know you've said that more than 250 board-certified veterinary ophthalmologists throughout the U.S. and in Canada and Puerto Rico are donating your time and resources to screen thousands of eligible service animals. I'm so delighted to have you with me today. I know, um, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the show. Oh. So um, let me just talk for a second. I, I know... Ben, uh, you, um, Eric, you've brought Ben with us, I think. Um, ben, you said, is a black American field Labrador who can climb a three-story ladder unassisted. That's amazing. Um, and we know, of course, that Ben's eyesight is vital to his job. He's a search and rescue job from Vin, Vin, dog from Ventura, California, that can be called upon at any time to rescue someone who is alive during a disaster. Eric Darling is Ben's handler, um, and Eric has brought Ben to participate in the uh, ACVO Marial National Service Dog Eye Exam event for two years in a row. I can't wait to hear about that. Um, but Eric and Dr. Nancy Bromberg, um, a board-certified veterinary ophthalmologist, is here with us today to talk about this exciting and important event. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having us. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um Tell us a little bit more about the event. So um, how did you get started with it? What, with this? What compelled you to participate? How did you get involved? Dr. Nancy, you want to go first? Well, the, the first um, examination event took place in 2008, and I was one of the ophthalmologists that participated. And it became, that was my dog Zelda in the background, sneezing. <laughs> Um, it became one of my favorite times of the year because it's just so gratifying mm -hmm. to examine the dogs yeah. that come in. Um, and I've participated um, every year since. This is our sixth, sixth year. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the month of May. Wow. I'm betting it's an, a lot of work. <laughs> Um, it can be, but it's, um, it's, you know, it, it's just such a wonderful feeling, especially, you know, it's a time of year that you really feel like you're giving back to the, these dogs that, yeah. um, work for us and give, un, um, just give us love and, um, and we just want to give back to them, and if we can find a problem that perhaps could be treated or arrested in its tracks, it's mm. even better for us. Yes. Yeah. Mm. 
helping a dog like that save their sight so they can live a you know a, a better quality of life with vision um, and be able to serve more uh, and and give more and love more you know oh, that that has to be gratifying it just has to be such a blessing to be able to do that mm. thank you thank you so much for your work where are you located excuse me where are you located um i uh, work in a specialty practice in fairfax virginia fairfax virginia okay great great Great. So if we have any listeners in the Fairfax, Virginia area, they'll know um, that you're close. I love that. So, um, so Eric, how did you get involved? Well, my, myself and my partner, Ben, got involved actually through my wife's practice. She works for an animal hospital in Ventura County. And so two years ago, I started taking Ben for his annual eye exam uh, because his eyes are, are as, as important as his nose when he looks for live uh, victims in a disaster. Yes. So we did it two years ago. Then last year we were honored to go out there and do it again. And mm-hmm. I just cannot thank the, the veterinarians that do this because what they're providing to our dog is helping us provide to, the, to everybody else in the world that our dogs get deployed to to be able to help find them in case of the worst-case scenario. Right. So the docs that are doing this are, are actually saving us to help save somebody else. So, like, we are so thrilled to be a part and honored to be a part of this program. Mm, I'm so delighted. And that that you take uh, Ben with you to participate and, you know, and to um, to help get the word out. I'm just so honored to support you both in this important work. So thank you for letting me get a bit involved on my end. Um, so can you tell us an, uh, a story about something that, that's happened or that you've seen or noticed? Um well, there are two stories that come to mind. Um, one is the very first year that I participated. Um, one person um, with MS came in with her service dog, a Labrador retriever, um, that she had gotten from Canine Companions for Independence. Mm. She told me that she had been so despondent before she got the dog that um, she had questioned whether or not she wanted to continue on. Yeah. And the dog, uh, when she got the dog, it made such an incredible difference in her life that it turned everything around. Yeah. And, um, you know, my being able to examine her dog's eyes and make sure that they were healthy and that there was nothing that was going to interfere with her, with the dog's ability to continue helping her was just wonderful Um, and last year or I should say two years ago there was a dog um, a bomb um, sniffing dog from the Pentagon Mm -hmm. who came in and did have an inherited problem with his eyes that Mm -hmm. if untreated could affect the vision but is a totally controllable eye problem and we started the dog on medications and the dog is totally controlled and so we'll be able to continue to work for the Pentagon. Mm. Wow. So you saved you saved a wonderful bomb dog, bomb sniffing dog. I, ooh, wow. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, it's it's so interesting. You know, it, those of us who have dogs and of course all animals, um, you know, horses and cats and whoever, you know, it's it's sometimes a little hard to know. Can they see? Can they not see? Are they having trouble seeing? You know, um, did they trip on that step because they couldn't see it <laughs> or because they were just going too fast and they weren't paying attention? Or, you know, do they not want to go in that dark room because they can't see um, or because there's something in there, you know, a monster in the closet kind of thing? I don't know. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, but you know, it, it, uh, in in my line of work, you know, as as a communicator, I can ask them, you know, and they can actually tell me, you know, well, I'm having trouble, or I'm, you know, I can't see anything in this quadrant, you know, I, my peripheral vision is low, things are distorted. They could just tell me. But for most folks, you know, we have to watch for symptoms or me. Um, what all you can do from your end uh, to, and what we should be looking for uh, to know that we need you. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? What, what should we as, as the, the dog parent 
be looking for, um, what, what kind of symptoms would pop up that would make us think that we need to get a check checkup? Um, when it, for a pet dog, um, it would be um, a change in the color of the eye or mm -hmm. um, drainage, redness, drainage. Um, okay. The dog um, is pawing at the eye or rubbing at one at his face constantly. Um, or holding the eye partially closed. Um, so those are the external things that would clue you in to the fact that your dog may be having an eye problem. Okay. Um, and when we're dealing with service dogs, especially if they're guide dogs, it would be a dog hesitating with steps or making a mistake and, um, you know, um, taking the person that he's leading, you know, somewhere where he shouldn't really be doing that. Oh. <laughs> I thought we were going to the bus stop, and how do we get to a subway? I don't know. We're at the subway. Ah, uh, that's funny. Okay, sorry. So, Not really. <laughs> Not really funny. I'm just a lot, a lot of vision issues are are behavioral, so you want to look for yeah. the change okay. in the dog's behavior. Okay, got it. That's good. It's very good. Good, important to know. Should we be getting an annual checkup for eyes? Um, like we typically do an annual checkup uh, for a well dog, you know, um, kind of care. Well, for service dogs, definitely. Okay. This program. Um, for most pet dogs, I I think that um, it's probably a good idea to get a baseline ophthalmic examination um, so that you know um, that your pet's eyes are starting out normal or, you know, with a specific minor problem, okay. and then um, not necessarily every year, but every year would be fine, um, have the pet checked to see if there's any progression or change from that baseline examination. Okay. All right. That makes a lot of, a lot of sense. Good. Okay. So how many service animals have been helped to date? Um. In the last five years, uh, between 15 and 16,000 animals have been examined. Wow. Mostly dogs, but there have been a few um, therapy horses and a donkey. Nice. <laughs> yes, a donkey. I love that. Uh, uh, that's fun. Huh. Okay. Okay. Great. So, do just um, service people, or service um, dog um, handlers, or owners? participate in this uh, event? Well, initially this event was um, organized for service dogs. Um, and then several years ago it was open to therapy dogs um, as well, therapy animals as well. Oh, okay. Um, because we realized how important some of these therapy animals are yes. in the jobs that they do. Um, some of them participate um, in reading programs with, with children that won't read to a person or in class, but will sit and read a book to a dog. Yeah. Wow. And, or, mm -hmm. you know, autistic children that will um, interact with a dog when they might not interact with another child or even their parents. Right. So right. Um, these dogs mm -hmm. and cats are also, well, I think probably cats are probably available. I mean, open to the we haven't really discussed cats, but there mm -hmm. are a lot of therapy cats up there, too. But there are. There are. I, probably course. most kitties think of themselves as therapy, as therapists for their people, <laughs> since, since most of us people need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think if we asked the animals, they'd probably all say, yes, uh, our person needs therapy, and we could certainly count as that because we work with our person every day. <clears throat> I love it. Oh, this is great. Okay, so what happens during an exam? Um, well, the ophthalmic examination is um, pretty much the same as it would be for a person. Okay. Uh, the eyelids and the surface of the eye are examined, and the pupils are dilated uh, oh. to facilitate examination of the lens and the retina. Um and that would be the basic examination. In some cases, um, if it's suspected that there's a problem with the, um, the tear production, perhaps um, a test to measure the tears 
would be used, um, or if it's suspected that perhaps the intraocular pressure was was elevated, um, um, they, we would do something called tenotomy so that we could um, to um, check the intraocular pressure and rule out possible glaucoma. Okay. I was just going to say, I'm assuming that animals can get glaucoma uh, at just as we do, we can, right? Right. Okay. Got it. Mm. Okay. Uh, is it painful, do you think? Uh, do animals typically tolerate it fairly well, or is it something that they get nervous or worried about? I would say that most most animals have absolutely no issues at all with the examination. Um, sometimes the application of the dilating drops could sting for a split second, but then it's gone and okay. they're fine. Okay. So, okay. Um, and you know, occasionally they get a little annoyed with the bright lights, but yeah, um, but it's mm -hmm. not at all painful. Okay. Well, you know, I've I've had quite a lot of eye problems myself, vision problems myself. I've had a retinal tear and surgery and um, other other issues. So. It certainly makes sense to me. The bright light annoys the heck out of me. <laughs> and, yes, those drops do sting. <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. All right. So I'm thinking that if we prepare our animals properly and let them know what to expect and why this is so important, that that would help all the way around. And like you said, they typically deal with stuff. So right. they just deal with it. So, all right. I love it. I love it. So... So you're looking for the symptoms that we talked about earlier. Is there anything else that you're looking for during an examination? Um, well, sometimes there can be problems that um, a dog, um, you know, might not even manifest changes on externally. Um, um, there was um, one um, service dog, a golden retriever that the um, handler had absolutely no idea um, had any issues, and it actually had an inherited, potentially vision-threatening disease that, if untreated, you know, could definitely lead to blindness. And that was caught early, um, mm -hmm. even though the dog outwardly did not show any signs. Nice. Okay. Early cataracts and retinal disease would not show up externally at all. Um, okay. So those are the things that can be identified at the time of the examination as well. Okay. Nice. Nice. So Eric, does Ben have any kind of vision issues, or he's he's good, right? And Ben's uh, vision is great, and it okay. goes to the part where we keep getting in every year to get our exams done, because when our dogs are working on the rubble pile, I, I would hate to say that Ben missed somebody because his eyes weren't any good. Yeah. Uh, so it's it, it's a benefit for not only like my dog, but the rest of the dogs that are on all the female task forces and through like the you know, Search Dog Foundation that gives dogs to people like me mm -hmm. to be able to know like we can go once a year to ACVO Muriel's uh, annual event mm -hmm. because none of our dogs can afford to have eye problems. Period. I mean, yes. Ben's healthy. His eyes are healthy. He loves to work, and I just had that little that warm feeling inside knowing every May I get that. It's okay. I got the I got the A plus report card for my dog. Even though I look at him every day, it helps to have a specialist look at him. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we hopefully we're all looking at our dogs every day. But if we don't know what to look for, or how to look for it, or what to notice, or you know, or like Dr. Nancy just said, there are some things that aren't observable. You know, maybe even the the animal themselves don't know um, that they have a pending problem that's that will be erupting. You know, later. So if we can head that off at the pass, that's a really wonderful, wonderful gift. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Mm. So <clears throat> I think we've been But I have pretty a story for you, though. Oh, oh like. a story. Uh, oh, I love stories. Tell me a story. I, I figured you'd like a good story. So <laughs> it's all, all of Ben's searches he's been on have all had happy endings. People have all, have all been found uh, that we've been a part of. Uh, awesome. But we did a search last a year ago, Easter, and Ben covered about 18 miles, mm. and I covered 15 miles. So my dog was able to range and work outside of my, out of my sight mm -hmm. because of how good his eyes are. We were in rugged, nasty terrain looking for someone that was lost. Wow. So knowing that Ben's eyes are, are in good health and that he's in good health ensured that 
all that area that we covered that there wasn't somebody, that missing hiker wasn't there. Mm-hmm. They ended up finding them someplace else. But at least we knew those 18 miles that had been covered, mm-hmm. nobody was missing. Wow. So it, it goes to show, again, what Dr. Nancy and her group do to ensure our dogs are working at the best caliber with their vision. Mm, I love that. Wow. I, I just, the Thanks, whole topic sorry. of, yeah, the whole topic of search and rescue is such an awesome, awesome work with, with our dogs. How oh, amazing. Congratulations, you guys. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's pretty clear that eye exams are really, really important. I hope I, that all of our listeners are paying attention. And I'm, I'm even thinking about my dog, Einstein. Um, so where could listeners find out more information about how to register or participate in the event? Um, they can get additional information and find out if their pet qualifies for the free examination by okay. going to um, the ACVO um, website. It's www.acvoiexam. That's I, I'm sorry, that's E Y E E X A M dot org, and all the information will be there for qualifications, how to register your dog. Okay. And then once the dog is registered, a list of participating ophthalmologists. Awesome. Okay, so again, the website is www.acvoiexam.org, E-Y-E-E-X-A-M.org, um, A-C-V-O as in American College of Veterinary Ophthalmologists. <laughs> That's a big one. Uh, so good. Okay, so they can go there to qualify and register um, and be connected with um, the list of the wonderful um, ophthalmologists who are participating in this event. So hopefully they can find someone close to them to go to. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So what advice or suggestions do you have for any vets who might be listening or anyone who knows a vet, which is, should be all of us, um, who would like to get involved with the event? Do they need to be an ophthalmologist specialist or um, uh, could any vet or, or practice um, participate? Well, only um, diplomates of the of the college can do the examination. Okay. However, um, veterinarians um, play an important role in um, making sure that um, their clients um, and the communities that they serve uh, know about the service that we provide. Okay. So they're they're very important in the in the grand scheme of things for us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. So they need to know what what's going on and about the event, and to be able to refer their clients or you know their patients to um, to participate. Great. And then if they are in fact a member of the board or the the College of Veterinary Ophthalmologists, um, then they can. Uh, how would they find out how to participate? Well, if the diplomates are asked every year um, whether or not they want to participate. Ah. And okay. Also Information is sent to um, to the um, to the the director, and um, then their name is added to the list of participating ophthalmologists. Okay, I love it. All right, so we definitely want to support our um, diplomates, our our uh, uh, veterinary eye specialist ophthalmologists. We want to support and encourage you to participate. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful event as it does such a such a critical service to the animals who are serving us and helping us to be better and um, helping us be better people, you know, better uh, healthy, help us find us when we're lost, um, help us rescue us when we're in trouble. So mm-hmm. thank you both so much. Is there anything you want to leave us with before we uh, finish up here today? Um, I just wanted to add that registration takes place through this month until um, April 30th and the examinations themselves are in the month of May. Okay. So people that um, feel that they qualify and want to register their dogs um, have until um, April 30th to do so. Okay. Very good. So if you have a dog or know of someone who has a therapy animal that would that would qualify, be sure that they know about this wonderful event and that they take action 
quickly and get their um, application in before the end of April, um, and then be connected in with um, uh, uh, one of the wonderful participating vets uh, that are helping with this. Thank you so much, Dr. Nancy, for doing this, and thank you, Eric, for being yeah. Thank you, Eric, for being such a wonderful part of it too, and everyone else. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You are so welcome. Okay, guys, I'm looking forward to another uh, fabulous event this year um, and for many, many years to come. So thank you again for sharing your time and your love of animals. Um, ah, You help make our world a better place. Uh, Well, thank you again for having us. You're welcome. All right. We'll talk later. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valhart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life.